Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Maidens of Mayhem podcast. I will be your DM today. My name is Gabby. This is a D&D role-playing podcast that focuses more on the story aspect than the combat part. As far as any news I have to tell you guys, there have been no bird incidents since we last talked. So maybe the whole birds attacking me while I record won't happen. But now I probably jinxed it. Anyway, I'm going to go to Molly now. I play Alessandra Dompier Road. For those of you who just want a refresher, she is about six foot. She has black hair and fangs, kind of like a vampire. Considering she's half vampire, that makes sense. So that's Alessandra. And then we'll go to Morgan. Uh, I'm Morgan. I will be playing uh, Vesper Arvindal, a cleric of Twilight. She's about six foot, six foot one, blonde hair with white streaks and. Pretty, pretty average otherwise. That's Vesper. And lastly, we'll go to Michaela. Hi guys, um, I'm Michaela. I'm going to be playing Nemi Nemesis. She is my tiefling ranger. She is about 5'6". She has light violet skin, dark eyes, and obviously the, the tiefling horns. And she has a companion named Waffles McButters. And Waffles is like a golden brown, and he sleeps in a sack that she carries around. And yeah, that's that's about it. So we're about to get into our session one. So that's very exciting. We're actually getting to play. And I'm sure you'll notice we're a little bit nervous figuring this out. But I think as we get into actually playing, it'll just be like we were before we hit record. So are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. (laughs) Ready is. As ready as we're gonna get at this point, yep. so. All right. So you guys just left the Kingdom of Foundal, where you had stayed a few days and took care of some things for the king. Um, you started traveling south because you overheard some people talking in a tavern about a nomadic tribe of satyrs who needed help, but it didn't seem like anyone was really willing to actually assist them when they were talking about it. So... You guys have been traveling for a little while. After a half day's travel along the main road, a strange set of gray and white stones placed in a spiral beneath a berry bush catches your eye. This is the marker that you overheard in the tavern. Satyrs created these designs, much like the signposts of the human world, to indicate one of their villages is nearby. Turning left off the road leads you into the forest known as the Ivory Wood. The bright sunshine warming your skin is blocked out by the lush foliage of the trees. Sticks and acorns crack beneath your feet. Just as the three of you begin to think you're lost, a giant tree stands before you, one split slightly at the base, with a tunnel leading down. There is another smaller circle of stones indicating that this must be the burrow of Shalar. We just walked up towards the yeah. burrow. You're, you're at the base of that tree that leads into the tunnel. And it's up to you guys. You go in, do you investigate further? What do you guys do? Uh, Nami is gonna uh, make a face of looking like, oh, this is kind of cool, because she's been in lots of woods, and she hasn't seen something like this before. But she's gonna kind of look at Vesper, like, what do, what do you think we should do? She's totally thinking of as Vesper is the team leader here, <laughs> as everybody will find out, Nami is not a team leader, so... <laughs> um, uh, Vesper is just gonna look kind of... Give a cursory glance of the tree and uh, just the surroundings, really. Do you want to roll a perception check? Sure. First roll of this. Oh. <laughs> ah! Do the honors. Uh, eh, 12. 12. Not great. Not great. You definitely <laughs> are in a forest. Uh, a very strange feeling forest. You definitely feel strong notes of like arcane magics Ooh. at work. But you don't okay. feel threatened or sense any danger nearby. You just think that, hey, this marker is what satyrs do. This is where I, we think we needed to go. So that's about it. I'll okay. give a uh, I'll give a look to my companions. Are we all good? <laughs> also, I'm just gonna shrug and walk inside. Oh, um, I, um, I guess we should just uh, yeah. Hello, Alessandra. Uh, all right. So as the three of you enter the entrance of this great tree, the tunnel leading down into the cool, dim burrow of Shilar expands gradually to allow for foot traffic going both ways. 
The ground levels off fairly soon after descending 15 feet. Lanterns of all colors and sizes line the wall. Some regular oil lanterns, some jars of fireflies, and some random objects that appear to glow by magical means. A tank guard glowing pink in color goes out and you hear a voice from around the corner curse. What the scout? I get already! A satyr with a curly bush of brown hair and a goatee, donning a sage green cloak with an oak tree growing out of an acorn and bordering the edges, stumbles up to the tankard, touches it, and resumes the light spell on it. After he does this, he, like, stumbles a little bit and then notices you guys and goes, Oh, to scout! Once again. He says, What are you lot doing down in here? Uh, once again, Nemi is going to look at Vesper to answer because she does not she she's kind of uh, nervous right now I believe... or, or Alessandra because she, she don't care <laughs> just not her as um, long as it's not her <laughs> we had heard that they were asking they were looking for help correct yes okay um we we had heard you needed some help uh and we're coming to uh, offer our services perhaps this satyr's eyes go wide and then he looks at you and he's just like oh your adventures yes yes the the lady will be much pleased uh follow, follow me follow me and he just kind of starts like stumbling back further down the the tunnel and just expects you to follow him alessandra's gonna shrug and just follow him <laughs> uh nami's uh, gonna follow sue and uh actually waffles at this point he's gonna pop his head up he's gonna sniff around See that we're obviously not outside anymore. He's gonna look at Nemi and kind of wiggle his nose a little bit and pop right down in the bag. So he's, he really doesn't care where they're at right now. He has no care in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, as you guys are following him, you it's very easy. The stench of booze is heavy on this satyr. And you're figuring <laughs> out that that's pretty much why he is stumbling so much. And he's very, you know, boisterous. So you follow him further, probably maybe just another... 20 feet or so and then you see the entry tunnel opens into a large cavern set into the walls are various dwellings and shops in the middle of the chamber several satyrs are either passed out drunk leaning up against tree roots or dancing without a care in the world an amateur musician provides both an offbeat and inconsistent melody for the carefree drunkards one of the more sober satyrs thrusts steins of ale into your hands before skipping away oh uh thank you um <laughs> He's been the I will, I, I will, um, Vesper will, uh, ask the satyr leading us, is, is this customary? Uh, he, he, like, kind of stumbles to turn around and look at you, he says, like, oh, yes, drink up, drink up, you must have some, it is quite delicious. And then he, like, takes what he takes the one out of Vesper's hand, like, takes a swig of it, like, it goes in his goatee a little bit, oh! and then he hands it back to you. Yes, the goodest of our ale. Is he drunk? Oh, he is so drunk. Vesper will uh put her her <laughs> mug up and then take a drink. Okay. Um so when you take a drink of this ale, you notice fresh notes of oak, nuts and cinnamon. It's very good, very tasty. It's it's about a you know, more of a mild ale. You think you'd probably have to drink at least a whole like tankard to be able to get drunk, but it's definitely tasty. That you just described medieval fireball. <laughs> Oak and cinnamon, a little bit of a regret. <laughs> medieval fireball. A little bit of regret. Alessandra's gonna knock back her drink, wipe her mouth, and say, What are we celebrating again? Um, so if you knock back your whole drink, give me a constitution saving throw, please. <laughs> you can see Nemi in the corner. Chug. 17. Chug, chug. 17. Uh, you have the same, like, vibe that Vesper got just from her sip. It's just, like, this is really good, but it would probably take, like, another full, like, cup to to feel something, to really feel something. Nemi, were you going to drink yours, or? Yeah, Nemi's just sipping on it, just okay. real lightly. She's not chugging it back. She's basking in this good drink. Like a, <laughs> like a connoisseur, yeah. you know? Like Yeah, she really is. She stuck her, like, hints hint of, uh... It broken She's... here yes. uh-huh. <laughs> that's, yeah that's what she does besides hunting she's a wine or ale connoisseur so the satyr turns back to you alessandra when you ask what what they're celebrating he says 
oh, nothing. This is just a Tuesday. And he just grabs um, a cup from, and you see that there's just this open bar in the middle of this um, giant cavern that's opened up in front of you. It's just an open bar of, like, wine bottles, ale, like, barrels of something. Like, and he just goes over and starts serving himself, and he, like, just pours, like, a bunch of them and just basically, like, shoots them all back. And we're going to see how much more drunk this man gets. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. He just slouches over. He's just like, Dorm! What, wait, um, why, why are you, why are you all here? Uh, like um, I said earlier, um, you needed help, I believe? Me, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm great. Um, I'm your fantastic. Pe- <laughs> your people needed help, maybe then somebody in your people? I'm gonna see how much he's remembering right now. Vesper's just looking around, kind of like, Okay, taking it all in. <laughs> uh, Nami's gonna look look at her drink, and she's gonna go. He is right. It is Tuesday, and then she's gonna take another sip. <laughs> so, as far as you're looking around, you're just seeing that you think that this is just the normal state of affair here, because like okay. almost everyone else yeah. is as drunk as he is. Like, including the shopkeeps that you can see, like their little holes in the wall that they're serving out. They're all drunk. The amateur musician is drunk you don't think anyone here is sober except for like you guys at this point point. and the satyr that you've been talking to is like oh oh you got the message someone some someone responded to the message uh, i gotta take you i gotta take it to the chief uh, you gotta you gotta come with me and he gets back up and starts stumbling towards the back wall where you just see a bunch of like you know holes in the wall that are some shops and some dwellings and stuff like that he leads you to one in particular as long as you are willing to follow him uh yeah yeah. i think we're just gonna follow the really drunk guy i mean what could go wrong (laughs) (laughs) go wrong keep sipping (laughs) so he leads you to where you presume is the chief since that's what he said last and when you enter you see a humble abode the chief's dwelling is the same as everyone else's, a hole in the wall with just enough room for the three inhabitants who spend their nights here. Only essentials furnish the room, four chairs and a table, a small kitchenette, and a stove in the corner, and a simple queen-sized bed. There's another side room that leads to another basically furnished room with a smaller bed. And when you walk in, you see two satyrs sitting at the table. The male satyr is sitting down at the table with you would presume is probably his wife he has messy blonde curly hair bright blue eyes and his scraggly beard comes down to about his collarbone his horns curl behind his pointed ears with vines wrapped around them and he dons a simple brown leather vest with a golden pocket watch tucked into the pocket and then the woman sitting across from him she's looks to be slightly shorter than him, and she has meticulously braided long red hair with purple and white ribbons, um, like, braided throughout it. Her eyes are green, and she has a very strong nose with freckles on it. Her horns stand uh, upward in twists, um, kind of more like in antelopes, and she wears a deep violet Ooh. banded top with a beige flowing skirt that exposes her furry legs to the slits on the sides. And when this um, mysterious drunken satyr brings you into the room, he just kind of stumbles in through, there's no door, just through the hole in the wall. And he's just like, <laughs> Oi, um, you're an Alyssum. Uh, I, you got some, and he's just like, just, just get in here. And he just wave, like waves you guys in. Um, Nami's going to slowly walk in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to breathe in like she owns the place. The couple look at you and look at the drunk man, and they seem to be a little bit more sober, but you see that they are sipping from wine glasses at the table. And the lady uh, says, oh, um, thank you, Grover. Um, why don't you go have a, a go sit by the, uh, the musician? It seems like you need a little break. And Grover, who you've now learned the name of, is like, you know what, miss, I think that'd be a great idea. And then he just stumbles back out. The woman will stand, and she sets her, she leaves her wine glass on the table, and she stands, and she looks at three of you, and she says, I really was starting to think no one would answer our call. You're, you're here to, to help with... And she looks over at the, the man, and she's like, a certain little um, quest we have. Andrew's um, just gonna nod. Mammy's gonna say, um, little... 
quest, uh, what might be this, quote, little quest be? She's like, oh, well, of course, we should probably explain it in better detail before we just expect you three to take it upon yourselves to help. Um, why don't you, you have a seat? And she gestures for the three of you to sit. And she goes and she grabs another chair to pull over to sit and talk with you guys. She goes and sits down. The lady says, well, first, I suppose I should start off by introducing ourselves, shouldn't we, honey? And the, the male satyr just kind of nods and he just continues to sip on his drink. And she's like, my name is Alyssum, and this is my husband, Yaro. We are the chiefs of this little tribe. We don't stay in many places long, but we did find this tree to be quite quite magnificent, and we knew we had to have one of our dwellings here for the satyr kind. Shylar has been our home for, for a little bit now. We were planning on moving on, and then it happened, and it's kind of put our plans on, you know, a little bit of a pause, but... That's why hopefully you're here. See, our, our daughter Tulip, when she turned 24 and a half, she awoke with a mark. That of which looks like a cloven hoof on her collarbone. That mark means something to us. She needs to go and meet with the Great Winged One. It's a, it's a great honor. The Great Winged One is at the highest peak of the windless mountains. She must commune with him before the eve of her 25th birthday. Now that is about four weeks away now. She must get there beforehand, but we are quite worried because our young Tulip is very naive as to the world. She hasn't really ventured out too far from our tribe. And... That's not to say that we haven't encouraged her to or tried to expose her to things, because we have traveled for most of her life, but she's always been more of a homebody. So our quest that we would offer to you is if you would please help her get to the Great Wing One before her birthday, as we are afraid she won't return, both due to her inexperience and also... And she takes a deep breath and looks over at Yaro for a second, and Yaro just kind of nods encouragingly to his wife, and she says, Well... The, the last three who were marked, and, and mind you, this only happens once every 100 years. The last three never made it back, and no one's known why, and we, we don't want that to happen to Dear Tulip. So that's why we were trying to get someone to help her get there, and more importantly, get back. Does that sound like something the three of you would be interested in or do you have any questions of course Nemi's just gonna gulp like the room is gonna be quiet after she says that and you're just gonna hear like a gulp because she's nervous <laughs> <laughs> um yet again she's gonna kind of side eye this for like does that sound good because she is not <laughs> sure it sounds kind of risky, <laughs> and she's uh, not very money oriented either. So, Alessandra's going to lean forward, and she's going to say, "Where exactly can we find this great winged one?" Uh, Alyssa replies, "He resides at the very top of the highest peak in the Windless Mountains. Now, the Windless Mountains are the furthest south point from here, um, before you hit the ocean, the mountains. Tulip does know the way." And we could also provide a map if you so wish. Alessandra's going to nod very profusely. She's just going to, like, the whole table's going to start shaking. The Gem Clover Road does pretty much take you to Lake Peridor. And as she's, like, explaining where you're going to be going, she pulls out a map for you. I will have to send you guys a map at a later date because I was not prepared for this. <laughs> but, um... Often, Give us every detail. <laughs> um, like, but the Gem Clover Road will take you all the way to the lake. And once you cross the lake... That's where it gets a little bit more tricky, as there is no longer a path through the Windless Mountains. You'll be able to see the tallest peak, of course, but the very most that I can tell you is that it is the utmost south from here. Alessandra's just going to well, say, and what will we receive in return for getting to a loop there and back safely? Ah, uh, yes, the, the reward. See... We've come into a little bit of trouble, but what we can guarantee is if you are able to get Tulip back here, we can 
give you the alliance of satyr kind. We will tell our people of your accomplishments as we travel, and as long as a satyr knows who you are, they will regard you as friend. Her face is going to kind of twist, and she's going to lean back in her chair and cross her arms. She's very disappointed, but she's not going to say anything. Nemi being Nemi. She's so nice. She's going to be like, well, we would um, be new friends, I guess. And she, Nemi is very lonely, so a new friend, she's down for it. So. <laughs> uh, Vesper will speak up here in this and ask, um, uh, is there any way you would be able to help us with these travels? Providing a map, obviously, any sort of potions or other items or means that might help us to accomplish this task? Uh, she says, well, yes, we do have some shops here that you'd be able to peruse. I'm sure that Pine would be willing to give you a pretty good discount for anything she has that you may need. Um, Orthos I cannot speak for, as he is not one of our our tribe. He's a traveling merchant, so he has no no loyalties to us, per se, but he does have some things as well. We can give you some rations for the road, if that would help. And, of course, some ale and wine for good tidings. Uh, that would Ooh. that would be much appreciated if we uh, do take this up. Um, uh, I, I think that we should, we should do it. I mean... Why not? In that way, we get to spend more time together, guys. Alessandra's just gonna. Smile. Alessandra's gonna like ruffle her hair very playfully. Vesper looks in the unseen camera as if she's on an unspecified TV show. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna turn to my. Oh, okay, we look at each other then. Oh. Hello. <laughs> okay. You make eye contact. We do. <laughs> You, do you say something or no? Nami's just going to smile and be like, yeah, Vesper, we could spend more time together. And then she's going to pick waffles up out of the bag and she's going to be like, you hear that, buddy? We're going to have some company for a while. And then she's going to slowly place him back in the, in the bag. He didn't wake up. He didn't even look. He didn't care. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll look between Nemi and Alessandra the, then and be like, uh, so we want to do this? I was going to say we could go take a moment and talk about it, but... I mean, if, if, if you want to discuss it, we can. Um, but I'll leave that between you and Alessandra. And then she's going to look at Alessandra. Alessandra's <laughs> going to shrug and say, What the hell? I need something to do. Uh, so I guess it's settled then. I think we're going to do it. Oh, that's just wonderful. We, c- we couldn't get it. That's that's great. Yaro, how about you go and start getting them some supplies? I I will go talk to Pine about maybe get you some discount at her store. And um I have to admit that we kind of lost track of Tulip this morning. Um we haven't seen her. Oh, no. Uh if you I'm I'm sure she's around here somewhere. If you would like to look for her and perhaps meet us back here, um and we'll have the uh, a package for you to take for the food and the wine and all that. And uh, you can go talk with Pine afterwards for anything you may need to purchase from her. But um, we gotta find Tulip first, if you would please help out with that. And she, uh, Yarrow had already left. He just silently got up and like left as soon as his wife was like, "Yeah, go, go." get them some food to take he just automatically got up and as soon as she finishes like yeah all, all right she she rushes out the door to go talk to whoever this pine satyr is i guess we're gonna have to find this tulip then she's like that um mm. that, that video i i'm crazy but i am <laughs> <Well, I'm free. laughs> <It's just laughs> yeah. yeah should we go find her yeah, do you have any idea where she would be? Alyssa left. Had <laughs> Nemi, how good are you? <laughs> you could follow Nemi, her, yeah. Nemi, how good are you at tracking? I'm I'm not sure. I mean, she she's she thinks she's fairly well. I mean she usually tracks by herself when she's hunting. I mean, she could give it a go, I guess. <laughs> Alice, I'm just gonna look um, over at Nemi and she's gonna say, Should we track her? Uh, I mean, that's your expertise, Nemi. <laughs> um, oh, she's gonna get all nervous. She doesn't want to mess up. 
Uh, no, so how, um, how are you going to go about trying to track someone you've never met before, so you don't know what she looks like? Because you didn't get a description or anything, you just know that she's Tulip, and Pick some she's random Friday Friday tracks and hope they... <laughs> Yeah, like, can she go kind of scour outside and try to see? I mean, you wouldn't even have to roll for that if you just want to look for Seder tracks and follow the first one you see. Oh, yeah. Nobody's going to do that. Okay. So you just start following a random set of um, goat marks, basically, in the dirt. And um, it leads you over to someone you probably assume isn't Tulip. He uh, is has darker skin. He has a closely shaven head with tall, very, very tall horns just sticking straight up and piercing blue eyes, like, icy blue. And when you walk up to him, he's, like, bare-chested, like, the only thing, like, he's basically wearing is, like, these, um, elaborate, like, jewel and tooth necklace is what he's wearing. And when you walk up to him, like, you look up for the first time from the, the footprints you're following them, you, you look up at this, this very tall satyr, which isn't that tall for a satyr, because satyrs are not generally tall you're getting as you're walking amongst these people. Yeah. But he's about 5'5", five five, so he's almost as tall as Nemi, which is surprising. So you just come face-to-face, yeah. eye contact level with these icy blue eyes. Uh, when Nemi lifts her head up, because she's going to be kind of crouching down, really trying to look at the tracks. But when she looks up and is face-to-face with him, she's going to go, Oh, um, hi, my, my name is uh, Nemi. I'm going to take it that you're not... Tulip. No, what, I'm what's not your name? Tulip. My name is Orthos. Oh, um, nice to meet you, Orthos. Um, I am looking for a Tulip. I don't know if you would know where she would be. You're looking for the chief's daughter? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Um, uh, we're gonna be going on a very important mission. And he kind of leans up against his, like, shelf of wares. Oh, no. It's the jock he- satyr. And he starts to sip on his uh, his tankard of ale, and he's just like, I may know where she is. Oh, um, you may. I mean, it, even if you can just point me into a direction, it's it's really important that I find her soon. I, I understand, and it is also very important for me to uh, make a living. And he kind of, like, really, like, is gesturing, like, not so subtly towards his wares. I will look through. What is the cheapest thing? There's no price tags on anything, but I can tell you what you're looking through. Sure. Yeah, what are his wares? <laughs> you see a crystal knob that has seemed to have come from a door, a diary that seems to be missing seven pages, a scrap of cloth from an old banner, a whistle made from gold color wood, and a white sequin glove sized for a human. Sandra's just gonna smile and she like full on smile. You could see her fangs and everything. And she's just gonna say, Are you sure you can't tell us where you saw Tulip last? Are you trying to persuade him? I am. All Here right. we go. Make your roll. 19. He looks you up and down, Alessandra, and he says, Maybe if you just bought a little something from me, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. She's going to take out a piece of, she's going to take out one of her silver coins and she's just going to kind of flip it up in the air and hand it to him. You just hit one silver coin? One silver coin. And then she's going to say, so where was she again? He looks at the silver coin at you and he's like, well, this won't buy you anything. And he flicks it back to you. Uh, I'm going to reach for the diary. Uh, May I, may I look at this? He nods. What is, what is in the diary? Um, so as you're just skimming it, it basically just seems to be some young, like, noble's diary. They never say their name or anything like that, but for the most part, it just seems to be just normal noble issues, like, going to balls, like, attending this, attending that, like, oh, why doesn't this person love me? Like, these young teenage qualms of a, of a rich person. But then the scribblings start to get really rough, and then the seven pages are missing at the end. Alessandra's going to lean in how much for to Vesper, and she's going to look over her shoulder at the diary. Vesper just, like, side-eyes you, and then asks how much for the, the mm-hmm. diary. For that, that will be 200 gold. Alessandra's going to smile real wide, and she's going to go, 150. Roll your persuasion. 
As this is happening, this is getting extremely intense. <laughs> Nemi is just wishing that Alessandra just to, like tone it down. She's not trying to piss this satyr guy off. All right? So she kind of, as we're doing this, she's slowly stepping back <laughs> from everybody. <laughs> it's a twenty-one. So he he looks over at Alessandra and then doesn't even address her. And then his eyes come back to Vesper, and he says, If you would like to speak in private about the price of this item, if you're truly interested, you can come with me. She, and he points at Alessandra without even looking at her, can stay out here. Um, Alessandra just gonna hand, <laughs> hand Vesper 200 gold. <laughs> um, I'll, talk, I'll talk price with you. All right, so he leads you back into, like, um, a hole in the wall, because they just burrow into everything. <laughs> but there's a curtain over this one, so... <laughs> hole. It was made for me. <laughs> um, so he just pushes back the curtain and lets you in, and you just see, like, there's boxes and stuff, stuff you'd expect from a traveling merchant. And he, like, closes the curtain behind you. And he says, So that was a very precious heirloom I came across during my travels, and that is why it is priced to 200 gold. Is there any questions you may have about the product? It's precious to you? Not to me, in a sense. Not personally. I just specialize in collecting oddities. Um. I would be willing to drop the price to 100 if you would do a favor for me. Uh, what is this favor? So, you're taking the chief's quest upon yourself. You're going to the top of the highest peak to meet the Great Wing One, correct? You seem to know about this, yes, that's correct. It has been quite the talk of the town, if you will. If you go and succeed in returning, I ask that you please bring me the smoothest stone from the top of that peak. That's all I would like in return, and I will drop the price to 100 gold. Until you were Miss Tulipids. The smoothest stone. Smoothest stone from the top Is of the peak. Is this going to be a stone I can easily find or identify from other smooth stones possibly up there? He kind of smirks and says, if you have a keen eye, it will be easy. How about 150 and I'll keep an eye out for that stone, but if I don't bring it back, you don't hold it against me. He nods. That that sounds fair to me. And should you find this smooth stone, I will be moving to a shop in Saltmarsh soon. So that is where you must find me. That's a deal then. So he'll take your 150 gold and let you keep the, the journal or the diary. And oh, uh, by the way, the, the journal. Uh, do you know uh, the name of the person who wrote this? He pauses for a minute because he started to walk back out and he takes his hand away from the curtain and turns around and he says I do but it is not a name that I can say why? he tries to give you a very meaningful look like he just kind of stares you down and then he goes and he just continues walking out of his shop can I try and um purse out what that look meant? yeah you can do like an insight check very curious about this. Very curious. Curious. Very curious. Mm-hmm. Ooh, 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 ooh. 24. 24. Yes, you've probably I seen mean. this look in someone's eye before, and you can say where you've seen it before yourself, but um, that's the look of someone who can't say a name because they've been cursed not to. So if he probably said any more information, something terrible would befall him. Okay. And with that, Alessandra and Nemi, you see Orthos walk back out. I'll, I'm falling behind, yeah. yes. Vesper in tow. And he points towards one of the higher burrows, one you'll probably have to climb to get to, and he's like, You'll find Tulip up there. Thank you. Um, what was your name again, sir? He does like a quick bow and he says, My name is Orthos. Uh, Nemi is gonna give like the littlest, the littlest worst vow ever but she's trying so hard to be respectful to him and she's gonna do it and she's gonna say thank you orthos 
And then um, she's going to tap her bag and Waffles is going to come out. And he's going to do like a little, like a little paw. And oh. then he's going to go back in. So. <laughs> Orthos kind of gives a little chuckle at the little guinea pig that just peeked out at him. And he just goes back <laughs> to lean up against like his, his shelf of stuff. Um, and sipping his ale. Alessandra's just gonna wave. She's just gonna kind of wiggle her fingers. He doesn't even look in your direction. She's gonna (laughs) shrug and walk away. (laughs) Uh, So I'm gonna take it. We start heading up the burrow. Um, I'm just gonna give a a glance back at at Orthos. And then I'll I'll, like nudge uh, Alessandra and hand her her 200 gold back. Say for another time. She's gonna nod and tuck it back into her bag. So you guys climb up to this burrow? Yeah, and Nemi's yeah. super nervous because she has to meet somebody else. She's, <laughs> she's very shy. So it's an easy climb because they basically like made little holes in the dirt like as a, like, a makeshift ladder to go up and down. Who's in the lead? So who walks into the hole first, basically? The dwelling, I should say, because it sounds weird to say who walks into the hole first. <laughs> Not Nemi. Um, Sandra is one of the better climbers. Say, yeah, I was gonna say Alessandra is probably first. <laughs> yeah, she is one of the better climbers. You know, because spooky vampires do spooky things like spooky climbing. Okay, so spooky ladies first. Is Vesper next, and maybe Nemi's bringing up the rear. Nemi, yeah, yeah, you bring up the rear. Okay, bring yeah. it up the rear. <laughs> Strong behind. <laughs> okay, so... got the glutes. <laughs> got the glutes going. I would say Alessandra. And Vesper, since you're the two closest when this happens, give me perception rolls to see if you hear this. Oh! 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 <laughs> uh, that's a... <laughs> that's a 24 w- total, but a natural 20. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, like, that's why... <laughs> <laughs> we got a nat 20 first episode, guys. I rolled an 11. <laughs> 11. Okay, yeah. so... Somehow, even though Alessandra is closer to the opening of this house, um, Ve- she doesn't hear it, but Vesper does. Maybe you're preoccupied in your own thoughts. I don't know, but you don't hear it. But Vesper, you hear a uh, female voice say, and I told her to take her wine bottle and- That's great, but do you think I could see it again? So it was a female voice interrupted by a male voice. Does Nemi even hear this since she's kind of further um, behind? Yeah, you're or... further down so you don't hear it. Vesper's the only okay. one who does. Alessandra's in La La Land or something, because she's close enough, but she still doesn't hear it. Can I get past Alessandra without, like, pushing her, like, off? You would I'm have assuming... to climb on top, like, on her back or something to, like, get over her to get closer. <laughs> well, to her, okay. So. Um, I kind of push her forward and, like, give her a look like, I feel like we need to be in there. We need to, like, knock. There's a door. Is there a door? Or is it just a hole? It's just a hole in the wall. <laughs> like, like, kind of hobbity kind of doors no, in there. None of these dwellings or stores have any doors on them. They're okay, literally just uh, holes in the wall. Just kind of pushing her kind of loudly so they know that we're coming. She's going to nod and pick up the pace. She's pretty good. With, like I said, she's pretty good with climbing. Okay, it's a rogue so... thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> So Sorry, guys, I have that Hemi Arbor disadvantage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's an easy like ladder to climb. Like they made it super easy, okay. so you don't even okay. have to roll for it either. Like any of you. Um, Good. but I'm gonna say since Nemi didn't hear it, she's not rushing. So you guys rush in and you see this first before Nemi even finishes climbing. So you walk in on a young male satyr with black horns, dark hair, and tan skin, pushing aside the collar of a young female satyr with short red hair to reveal a mark of a cloven hoof. He then says, you're just so beautiful. And the woman blushes. Ooh. Alessandra's just going to walk in and say, hi, I'm Alessandra. So as soon as you do that, the <laughs> the male like backs off from the from the girl. And then she just kind of looks at you and says, what are you? Who are you? I'm Alessandra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that part. But why are you in? Why are you in Cyprus's home? Are you Tulip? What does it matter to you? Alessandra's gonna roll her eyes and say, We came because we heard that you need some help. I'm doing just fine on my own, thank you very much. She's gonna, like, Alessandra's gonna, like, face palm and she's gonna say, We know about the great winged one. As Tulip responds to you, this male satyr, Cypress, goes behind her and, like, puts his hands on her hips and he's like, 
I think my babe can handle it just fine on her own. Well, with me by her side, of course. Ew, that just made me want to vomit. At this point, <laughs> at, the, <laughs> at this point, Nemi, you have entered the room. At the end of his sentence. <laughs> you just see a giant tiefling just come in the room after this. Oh my goodness. Um, Nemi's not gonna say a word. She's just gonna stand there. <laughs> Alison is gonna. Alison is gonna put her hands on her hips and she's gonna look at this male satyr and she's gonna say, "You think you're so brave, don't you?" Cypress is gonna reply, "Yeah, that's because I am, bruh." Alison is gonna. Un- Ew! Alison is gonna unsheath. <laughs> she's gonna unsheath her dagger and she's just gonna kind of inspect it, and she's gonna say, "All right, prove it. Stand against that wall." And Tulip is gonna like push more towards you guys and be like. Uh, is this part of the whole, like, quest thing? Because, like, I don't think this is what should be happening right now. She's just gonna look at Tulip and say, Oh no, if your boyfriend wants to come, he has to prove himself. So doesn't that mean that you should have to prove yourself, too? I've proved myself. I haven't seen it. And I'm the one in need of help. Honey, step aside. Honey, I don't think so. She's gonna look over at a best friend and be like, I think I'm second guessing this whole thing. We don't need a ch- we don't need to help this child. Apparently she's brave enough to do it on her own. Yeah, I am. And Nummy's gonna chime in and she's gonna be like, Oh honey, you don't wanna be alone. <laughs> <laughs> that is the saddest thing. Tulip's gonna look over at Nummy after she says that and she's like, I'm not gonna be alone. He's gonna go with me. And then she, like, points over her shoulder at Cyprus, and I'm gonna have the three of you give me an insight check on him. I don't trust this man. I don't insight. trust him either. Nope. I'm ready to stab him. Ten. I don't trust him. <laughs> Is that what that's, you roll? That's right, yeah. bitches. Your girl rolled a 17. Thank you. Ooh, Make up for... um, try a 21. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> That means right. reading this man like a book. So, Vesper, you don't get any more insight from him, but you don't trust him. Nemi and Alessandra, you both are getting this strong vibe that this relationship is new. Maybe only a few days new. And you don't think Cyprus is in it for any good reasons. Alistair is going to roll her eyes, and she's going to pull out the 200 gold that Vesper just gave back to her, and she's going to hold it up, and she's going to say, I'll give you 200 gold if you leave her alone. Tulip just, like, Ooh. looks at the, like, the little bag of money that you're holding up, and over at Cypress, she's like, nice try, that's not going to make, and then as soon as she says nice try, before she even finishes, Cypress runs over, takes the money, and leaves, the- <laughs> leaves his own house. I trip him <laughs> on the way out. Go ahead and give me... Give me a dex to see how fast you get your foot out before he gets Lord. out the door. And then as he smashes it. <gasps> you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe this, Daddy. <laughs> I swear to God, you are not going to believe this. Isn't I will send you a picture if I see it. It's a natural 20. <laughs> I swear to God. Okay, <laughs> you're also not going to believe this because he got you, a nat you one. This man and- <laughs> he got a nat oh, one. She got a nat 20. As so as he grabs me. I'm going to say he doesn't even get the money. So he goes to reach for it, but Vesper sticks out her (sighs) foot, trips him. He goes tumbling out of his house and lands on the ground below. Doesn't even get the bag. He gets nothing. Oh my god. She's going to put it back (laughs) in her pocket and look at Tulip and be like, so you still want to go with him? Or do you want to go alone? Uh, Or do you want to go with us? I I think he just got tripped into a different dimension. (laughs) (laughs) He's in the after play now. (laughs) Um, yeah, he's in the astro planes. So Tulip, like, runs past, like, looks over the edge where Cypress is, like, sprawled out, like, <laughs> clearly probably has some broken bones. And he's like, why? And she looks over at Mr. Why did you do that? He's never gonna like me now. It finally happened. From the way he went for that money, I don't know if he ever really liked you. Dang. Vespers <laughs> went for the throat on that one. <laughs> Ouch. She looks down back at Cyprus and then back up at you through and she says, but what makes you think that I would want to go with you now? You ruined, like, the best thing I had, like, in my life. Maybe I should just go by myself. 
Alessandra's gonna kind of. Um, do, do I see any other like rooms in this little? No, it just seems it's like a pure uh, bachelor pad, like studio apartment, like messy bed, like gross food all over the floor. Like it's just the single one room. She's gonna turn back and she's gonna look at Vesper and Nemi and she's gonna go. Would you guys mind stepping outside for a second? Sure. She's gonna hold her hands sure. up and say, "I'm not gonna hurt her." Yeah, we tr- okay. we trust you. Um. I'm gonna go check on Cypress, make sure he's not too badly hurt. Uh, yeah, I'll help you with that, Vesper. And then Nemi hurries up and turns around, turns away. And I'll, I'll give a look to, to Tulip when I say that, that, like, we're not total <laughs> douchebags, you know? <laughs> but, like, this was not a good choice. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll leave. <laughs> um, so we'll follow uh, Vesper and Nemi first. So you guys climb down the ladder, um, you get down, you see that some of the drunk people have noticed that Cypress has fallen and are trying to help him. <laughs> Most He's of like them have down it. there. <laughs> um, okay. So when you get down to him, he's just like, Ugh, uh, <laughs> um, I'm just gonna put him into a recovery position to make sure <laughs> he's not too badly concussed at first. Um, okay. uh, I guess, like, can I like check him over and see if anything's like broken or is he just like bruised uh give me a medicine check okay <laughs> <laughs> um oh, that's a, a 22 22 um yeah, his um right leg is at least fractured if not broken but everything okay. else just seems to be more <clears throat> bruised than anything else you think he probably just landed on that leg wrong it's the leg that you tripped him on I don't want to like do harm to him. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna throw a. We'll see what I'm gonna throw at him. I'll I'll throw a cure wounds at him. <laughs> you don't want to do any harm to him, but you just gave him else. <laughs> I just facilitated. <laughs> I didn't <it> directly. <laughs> You facilitated the yeet. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, I, heal I heal him for six hit points. Hopefully that's enough to at least mend the fracture in his leg. That's, that's yeah, funny. so you, you place your hand on his leg and it, it magically mends itself. He's still gonna be bruised and hurting and probably yeah. not able to do much for he quite a while. He needs that, though. <laughs> And once you um, um, heal his leg, he, like, looks up at you and says, like, Oh, get away from me, man. Like, you just, like, <laughs> hurt me. Like, what are you doing? Like, I get it. If you want to fucking help the freak, then you can help the freak. But, like, you can get away from me. <gasps> at this point, Nemi is going to be... Oh, because Nemi does not like bullies, okay? I so take my Warhammer out and I'll look at him dead in the eyes and say, You want that leg broken again? Cause that's all I'm hearing coming out of your mouth. Roll intimidation. Nemi, <laughs> Nemi, Nemi is appalled. She has not seen this side of Vesper. She's like looking at her like she's a serial serial, serial killer. Oh, oh god, little. that's a nineteen. Oh my, <laughs> she's rolling fantastic right now. Those are natural pants, eighteen. Pants, so pants, plus one. This is pants. This is pants. So pants. he he looks at you and he like tries to like scurry away like backwards like like crab crawl but he can't because he's too weak from all the bruises and he's like no 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 (laughs) ma'am okay I'm gonna like grab him by his like his bicep and tug him up and like just just look at him and say I don't want to see your face around here again and like shove him off um so when you shove him he's able to keep his feet and he just kind of stumbles in a different stumble compared to the other satyrs around, because he's not drunk. Um, and he just goes out the the tunnel, the exit tunnel. And, and as he you... as he's running, I yell at him. And when Tulip comes back, you're not going to talk to her again. He just keeps running. Um, Nemi is going to look <laughs> at Vesper, and she's just going to be like, the face, her jaw is like open, and <laughs> she's on the ground. Be like, She's literally. She's just gonna go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vesper will turn back to Nemi and be like, uh, "Sorry, you had to see that. I don't. Have to... Sorry." She's gonna be like, 
That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then she's gonna be like, <clears throat> oh, what a, what a jerk. He got what he deserved. I should have broken his leg. Uh, no, because then we would have had um a bunch of angry, angry savers. That's 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 probably true. You're right. Uh, um, maybe we should. I'm go gonna go get. Oh. Hmm? Oh, I was just gonna say maybe we could go check on uh, Alessandra. Before you guys go back, we're gonna camera pan to what uh, Alessandra was gonna say while this whole thing with Cyprus, you know, is happening. So, um, Alessandra. Alessandra is going to hold her hands up kind of in supplication and she's going to reach into her bag and she's going to pull out this silver coin that she likes to play with when she's like thinking or whatever. And she's going to show it to Tulip and she's going to say, now this was given to me by someone I loved more than my own life. And she's going to hand it to Tulip. She like very slowly takes it and looks at it. And she's, Alessandra's going to say, he cared for me more than he cared for fame, fortune, glory, anything. And I could tell, I could tell just by looking at that man, that all he wanted from you was the glory that would come with escorting you to the great winged one. Any man who would do such a thing is not a worthy man. Roll persuasion with advantage. 25. Her eyes just kind of cast downwards, and she hands, like, the coin back to you. And she's like, I just, I thought he actually liked me. She's going to kind of, she's going to kind of, like, let her shoulders relax and pull her kind of, like, into a very awkward hug. And she's going to say, "Some, sometime, someday, the right person will come for you. But I don't think now is that time. She just kind of, like, awkwardly stands there for a second. And then... She, like, pulls away, and she, like, kind of, like, shoves you a little bit. She's like, I guess we should, we should, we should, we should just go. We should just, we should just go. And she starts to go out of the room right when Nemi and Vesper return. Oh, so I'm just going to really um, hurt. She's going to pocket the coin real freaking quick. Uh, well, do they kind of bump into each other almost, or? Yeah, like, whoever was leading, like, going back up the ladder, like, probably got back in the room when uh, Tulip went to go grab for the ladder. I'd say maybe Nemi went first. Okay. So you two basically almost bump into each other then. Um, she's gonna say, um, your ex-boyfriend's okay. He, he ran away, but yeah, you shouldn't talk to that guy. And Tulip just says, yeah, maybe you're right. And she kind of, like, casts a glance back to Alessandra. And she says, um, should we just, uh, get going then? Yeah, but before we go, I guess I should introduce myself. Hi, I'm Nemi. And then she's going to stick her hand out and shake her hand. Uh, Tulip takes your hand and she's like, And um, I'm, I'm Tulip. Uh, you already knew that, so I didn't really need to introduce myself. And she's like, and she looks back over and she's like, I, I know you're Alessandra, and I'm going to say you probably step aside so that Vesper can step in the room. And Tulip looks at Vesper and she's like, And, uh, and what's your name? Uh, my name's Vesper, uh, and I, I do want to apologize for what I did earlier, but to be fair, he kind of did deserve it. She, like, shrugs her sh shoulders, and she's like, I I don't know if he really deserved that that much, but... I, I, I healed him. He's fine. Well, that's, that's good. Uh, Nemi's, after she says that um... good, she's gonna say, oh, there's one more person for you to meet. And then she's gonna pull waffles out of her, um her crossbody bag and hold him up and he's gonna look very annoyed and very skittish because he doesn't like new people as soon as you pull waffles out tulip bends over to look at him like gets as close as like she feels like is appropriate since she just met you guys and she's like oh my god he's so cute what's his name can i pet him oh my god he's so cute can i feed him something is he hungry can i give him food um his well for starters his name is waffles waffles mcbutters um he is my best friend and my soulmate and he's been my only friend for a really long time and then she's gonna lower her head as she says that but um i wouldn't necessarily hold him right away he doesn't 
really like new people, but I'm sure if you offered him a piece of food, he might warm up to you. Yes, and she, like, goes over to, like, the ice box that Cypress has and just starts rummaging through what, like, something like, like a guinea pig would have <laughs> or would want to eat, and she probably takes out, like, some, like, apple slices or something like that and comes out to offer oh. it to, to Waffles. And she's like, hi, Waffles, my name's Tulip. These are for you. And she, like, holds one hand out to see if he'll take it. Waffles is going to be extremely hesitant at first, but he cannot resist one of his favorite snacks, which happens to be apples. So he's going to snatch one real quick right out of her hand, and he's going to start for fiercely chewing it. And then he's kind of kind of look at her squinty eyed, but <laughs> he's still unsure about her. But he is happy that he has a snack. And Nemi is going to look at Tulip and say, Well, he definitely loves apples um so i'm sure he is very grateful right now but uh he definitely might need some time and he's still gonna look at her all squinty eyed <laughs> that's okay adorable things can have as much time as they want and she like takes her hand away and then nemi's gonna hold him up to her face while he's munching on the apples and she's gonna say and you are adorable waffles and then she's gonna put him back in her crossbody bag and you can hear him going <laughs> and they're eating the apples and the sack you just hear him munching away and i think that's all the time we're gonna have for the first episode so i think that was a pretty good start oh. sending an ex-boyfriend yes. tumbling out of his own home uh, <laughs> oh yeah uh -huh. um, Nebby got to see a little bit of Vashver being a possible psycho. No, I'm kidding. Uh, being a badass, honestly. I know! That's what she was just like, what? She did what no one was brave enough to do. What did you right. just call her? Oh, Vesper does not does not stand for that. That's fair. He 100%. wasn't a good person. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Alright, well, does anyone have anything they want to plug? Or any, like, parting statements for our first episode something to look back on when we've hit like episode 50 <laughs> naturally sarcastic it was so hard not throwing in those sarcastic remarks it was so hard <laughs> so hard yeah i have a shout out for a hagadair for my doordash delivery <laughs> <laughs> okay you can't say doordash that's copyright oh i'm sorry <laughs> uh Food delivery um, what about what about dash door that's not copyrighted for my, my dd delivery <laughs> yeah your dd your dnd &D. my dnd dnd &D. get it but Whatever. it's all back around it's all just a circle <laughs> your, dash, your dash and dunkin donuts that's what and we Dungeons run on dragons <laughs> dash and dunkin donuts <laughs> In this quarantine, that's about right. <laughs> Honestly, but uh, yeah, I'm. I I think that was cool. I I definitely think we'll get better. I think like us like pro like progressing a conversation. It it sounds really good. It seems like everything's flowed pretty well. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear it. Was very interesting. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited. We'll definitely get better as we get used to you know not worrying about the record button being pushed yeah i feel like whenever we do it we're gonna be listening back <laughs> on this and we're gonna be like we were trash like absolute <laughs> trash like, why did anyone ever listen to us i just can't right. believe i rolled two net 20s like Dude. i can't make that up i, I didn't know. any net 20s the rest of the podcast. Like... <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna roll so many net ones I didn't roll any nat 20s, but, like, my highest is a plus six to persuasion, so that was, like, on point. Yes. She was the person to talk to Tulip in that moment. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Vesper would have, like, been very blunt. Oh, Alessandra would have been, too, but she knows what it feels like. That's fair. All right, so thanks for listening, guys. If you want to follow us on any of our social medias, we are on Instagram at Maidens of Mayhem Pod and Twitter at Maiden Mayhem Pod. So we will see you guys next week, hopefully. Bye. 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 Yeah. <laughs>